You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. I was just listening to a Radio Freemasonry, ladies and gentlemen, and I heard that uh, they found a thousand POWs and MIAs in Vietnam. Not. Nope. Once again, the only place you ever get the truth is right here on the Hour of the Time. Ex-Congressman Bill Hinden is in uh, Thailand. He claims that he has absolute proof that there are two, two, American servicemen from the Vietnam War still alive in Vietnam. He has applied for a visa in order to go and check on his information and his proof, and the Vietnamese have denied his visa. That's the real story. And, uh, as usual, if you want the real story, always hang around for the hour of the time. Otherwise, you're going to go to bed with a bunch of bullshit in your head. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't stay glued to your radio tonight, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. In the first half hour, we have a guest, Mr. Chris Johnson from the state of Utah. In the second half hour, you're going to hear something you never dreamed you would ever hear. <laughs> Never in human history has so few taken so much from so many of America's Illuminati and their warlords of Wall Street and Washington. In just eight years, these gangsters and international government gangsters took us from the greatest creditor nation to the largest debtor nation on Earth. Our standard of living has dropped like a rock for four out of every five Americans. They have foreclosed on our homes, our farms, our factories. They've exported your child and surrendered our arms. A new world order. A new world order. A new world order. A new world order. Chris, welcome to the Hour of the Time. Good evening. And uh, you have quite a story to tell, don't you? Yes, sir, I do. Well, without uh, wasting any time, why don't we get right into it? Why don't you tell everybody who you are, where you're from, and exactly what has happened that's uh, brought you here? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Chris Johnson. I uh, am from Utah. Uh, Utah County, and um, I work as a an exploration geologist. I've spent the last 15 years exploring for uh, metalliferous ore deposits throughout the uh, basin and range, and uh, I'm well seasoned in that region of the country. And um, one uh, mining district that I'm have been working in over the last year um, brought me to. Uh, an experience that uh, has left a profound uh, effect on my way of thinking uh, about uh, uh, our, the present circumstances in our nation today. Now, where, where exactly were you at when this first incident took place? I was out in the uh, 
Tentic Mountains of the Basin and Range of Utah. This is about 100 miles south and east of Salt Lake City. And you were engaged in uh, geologic uh, exploration? Yes, sir. I was doing re geologic research, uh, gathering field data on a high rocky ridge. This is about six months ago um, as I was perched upon this rocky ridge overlooking a small mine camp uh, in a gulch about uh, three or four hundred feet below me. I heard to the west of me um, what were a, uh, numerous uh, helicopters and I didn't think much of that because I uh, had seen uh, many military activi activities uh, with aircraft and ground uh, uh, operations in the west desert of Utah in Nevada and so this time didn't seem any more unusual than any other until as I was able to obtain a visual fix on these choppers out in the far valley to the west of me I saw that the, in, out of loose formation came uh, a, a lone chopper it flew straight towards the canyon that uh, uh, I was over, uh, and uh, as it flew into the canyon, uh, I, I, I was merely just amused uh, until uh, thereafter I became rather disturbed to see that it was hovering within 30 or 40, maybe 20 feet over the, uh, the roofs of uh, inhabited homes of this little mine uh, camp community where there were maybe 15 or 20 families living and it would uh, fly over various uh, homes in such close uh, proximity. Um, I know FAA air law prohibits such um, uh, flights over civilian residences. As a matter of fact, there's a 500 foot ceiling uh, that prohibits aircraft from flying uh, uh, below that 500 foot level. At any rate, um, I uh, I was very disturbed about this. These were good people. Uh, they are friends uh, that I know in this canyon. Well, I, being the contrary type of person I am at times, I decided to I'll take my Brunton transit out, and I began to flash sunlight off of the mirror in this compass of mine towards this helicopter. Well, uh, perhaps hindsight's better than foresight, <laughs> you, you you made somebody a little bit uh, upset, didn't you? I I, uh, I, I attracted a little attention there. Uh, pretty soon, the uh, the chopper tipped uh, steeply, it pitched steeply, and uh, climbed very rapidly up uh, to the ridge where I was at. And it was about 40 or 50 feet from me that it turned broadside. The the doors on the chopper were open, and there was a man there uh, uh, training a machine gun on me. And um, I, I was about ready to piss in my britches. Uh, all I could think to do was to give the, the gentleman a salute, and um, uh, expecting that perhaps that would ease the tension, and it didn't. Uh, um, his appearance was very stoic. The uh, the uh, barrel kick tra was trained on me, and then. Um, it appeared as though that a gentleman uh, kneeled out and over around the side uh, with what looked like a camera in the process of taking photographs. And he was taking photographs of you? That It appeared to be so, sir. At this time, uh, I just froze, kept in a saluting uh, stance, and um, uh, it, he been, began then to bank around me, pivot around me, and as he did so, one of the outstanding characteristics uh, about this chopper is that there are absolutely no markings on the chopper whatsoever. And uh, it was in broad, bright sunlight uh, that I was able to see that it was not a dark green chopper, but a flat black chopper. And uh, then it proceeded as it pivoted around me to dive back into the valley and out uh, through the bottom of the gulch and to the west again. And that wasn't uh, <clears throat> that wasn't the end of it, but rather the beginning of a, a long uh, train of events that eventually uh, cost you your employment. Well, sir, uh, at least uh, for a temporary uh, situation, I've taken leave of absence, and um, uh, uh, what what occurred thereafter. Um, 
uh, it was more is more disturbing than what occurred uh, uh, on this certain day. Uh, I had immediately descended to the bottom of the canyon and found one of my co-workers and and uh, he too had seen the choppers flying at the bottom of the gulch. I expressed to him what had happened at the top of the ridge and uh, we were both astounded. About a, a week or so later, um, he expressed that he had talked to a, an individual who uh, was affiliated with the Utah Air Guard and uh, uh, it was expressed to this fellow worker of mine that uh, there were quite a few various military aircraft flying into the Dugway Tooele uh, military base complex area and that as they arrived in that, into that area that uh, uh, various uh, employees of those uh, facilities would paint these choppers flat black primer paint and uh, then they would be distributed to various federal government agencies for other types of uses rather than uh, con uh, conventional military use. So what you're saying is that uh, various agencies of the United States government, not military, are now flying flat black painted uh, aircraft. Apparently so, sir. And uh, this uh, went even further. Uh, soon you were approached by some friends that you knew who told you that there were uh, there was quite a bit of activity in, in uh, an area where they uh, had a cabin, and uh, why don't you take it from there and, and relax? I know you're very nervous, and uh, nobody's going to hurt you here, as you well know. You're you're uh, protected. This whole facility tonight is protected by the militia, and the uh, armed men are all over the the area. Nobody's going to come in here and hurt you or, or take what the people are going to hear later. So just relax and uh, recount your story. Well, I. <clears throat> I uh, uh, have grown very close to some of the uh, the uh, people that I work with out in the West Desert. Uh, they're very level-headed people. You'll find that most uh, folk of the Inner Mountain West, ranchers, miners, prospectors, uh, sheep herders, uh, they tend to be real level-headed folk. And um, uh, you have to you have to have some solidity to your character to make it out there in that rough country. At any rate, these folks, uh, uh, I heard them in conversation one evening about uh, some astounding things that were going on in their their lives out there in the West Desert. And I, as I moved in on the conversation, I expressed this uh, circumstance that had occurred to me up on the ridge with the chopper. And they, they expressed that I had not seen anything, that if I wanted to... Uh, to see some interesting activity that I needed to come out there to the West Desert at night. That I couldn't come out for just any particular night, but that the activity was rather random, so I needed to come out for a period of several weeks. So I did. I, I camped out, and uh, uh, many nights passed, and I began to more or less uh, uh, give up any hope of, of seeing the kind of activity they, that they had described until one night, all of a sudden, uh, the, the valley was filled with choppers, and uh, they began to knock on the cabin door saying, Chris, it's coming. So um, we barreled out onto the side of the mountain. And uh, the, 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 um, the valley was, had choppers uh, flying all, this was at night, flying all over the valley bottom along the sides of the mountains. And it appeared to be also a low-flying jet aircraft flying down through the valley. And um, uh, there's, there's a railroad siding out there, apparently a train. Uh, with flatbed cars uh, had rolled up and, and some kind of uh, equipment biz was being uh, offloaded and taken by transports uh, out to the West Desert and uh, quite a bit of activity. Uh, of course, it was dark with uh, uh, only a crescent moon and as I remember um, thinking to myself, well, boy, this is unusual. Uh, this not taking a place on a military reservation and where are they taking all of this activity and the gear out to the west? I, I did not know. But um, uh, it wasn't until the next, the day after that, that one of the workers who was supposed to show up to work the next morning, um, he, he, uh, he finally arrived back to work. And... Um, I asked this gentleman, where, where were you? Uh, we needed you to work uh, yesterday. And he, and, uh, he said, well, uh, 
Um, I, I, I've been uh, hiding out in the mountains all night, night long. Uh, I went back into town to fetch some, uh, some supplies and, uh, pulled in. As I came back out, I turned my engine over and the, uh, the oil pressure was low. Well, he got out, uh, uh, uh outside of his, the truck there and looked out on the, the, the pavement and there was a pool of oil there. He looked up underneath the, the vehicle and the uh, oil plug was pulled out. Well, he said, well, I, that can't be because we changed out of oil and we put that plug in there tight. Well, so he went back down into the, down the road, got some oil, came back, filled the crankcase up with oil, and uh, started to proceed down the road. Well, as he's pulling out of the, uh, the parking lot, he had noticed over uh, not too far down the way some uh, uh, some uh, dark colored uh, uh, Ford Blaze, uh, Chevy Blazers or Ford Broncos, that type of vehicle. And they had numbers printed on them, but he can't remember any any other insignia other than numbers printed on them. Well, he started taking down the road out to the West Desert again, and he, he looked in his rear view mirror, and these vehicles were following him. So he decided, well, he better just uh, put the metal to the pedal. So he started going like a bat out of Hades, and they followed suit. And he know he knew he was in a ch there was a chase on him, so he started going out into the desert. Uh, to try to uh, to leave these individuals, he turned off onto a BLM road, got up into some jeep trails, put it in four-wheel drive, and headed up into the mountains, and uh, drove his truck into a gulch, tried to c conceal himself as best as he could, and not more than within a half hour, 45 minutes, there were choppers um, on that mountain uh, flying all within the vicinity where he had left um, these uh, other vehicles in pursuit of him, and uh, he stayed there all night long and into the early morning uh, trying to evade whoever was, was trying to, to, to catch him. Um, at any rate, um, the, uh, one of the other individuals who had gotten rather bold, who had gone down into the, this one valley, had approached uh, the, the, this area of high activity, uh, and um, he saw individuals out in the valley dressed uh, in some type of a cloaking, and they had what he thought was funny-looking goggles on his face, their faces. And he yelled out at them and asked them, what you, what you doing out here? Uh, what's going on? And they didn't answer him anything. They just uh, were uh, very, very quiet. They just froze in position. He asked them again, what's going on out here? We're just kind of curious as to what's happening out here. And... Um, no answer. So he started to feel a little bit uncomfortable. So he started walking very fast back to his vehicle. And, uh, well, uh, <clears throat> just about a month ago, that same individual they found uh, out in the desert uh, um, about one in the morning firing his pistol into the air, um, uh, expressing, they're coming after me, they're coming to get me. And uh, that fellow um, is, is completely uh, lost his mind. At any rate, um, uh, uh, he was just an ordinary. Yes, this this was a very ordinary fellow. Uh, all of the people I work with are just very, very down to earth people, and uh, who I work with day in day out. And um, uh, at any rate. Um, the fundamental message that I think that ought to come from this, and that is that, that yes, it's one thing to see what one would think as um, standard um, military exercises in the West Desert. It's another thing for civilians to be harassed, to, um, to have choppers flying well below the 500-foot level, flying within 20, 30 feet of the roofs of people's homes, for machine guns to be trained on on law-abiding citizens, uh, for uh, people to be harassed and pursued, um, and um, I, there there is something fundamentally wrong. Uh, I don't fully understand personally the implications, but I have seen what I've seen. My colleagues have experienced and seen what they have seen, and uh, it lays at that. And you uh, you expressed to me an, another uh, experience that uh, actually happened to a law enforcement friend of yours. Would you care to uh, tell our listeners what happened to him? Well, yes, sir. There's a there's a law enforcement agent 
in Utah who attended a, uh, a meeting in Salt Lake City where apparently there was a large number of both federal and state uh, uh, county law enforcement agents uh, congregated and um, in that meeting uh, this one law enforcement agent that, that uh, I uh, know um, was astounded at what was uh, revealed in this meeting it was uh, he thought that the meeting was going to address the war on drugs or gang problems well to his surprise uh, the uh, individuals who were conducting the meeting from the federal government began to um, provide them a character profile. The profile that they iterated um, uh, was one that was supposed to be quote unquote um, a potential danger to the national security. Um, at any rate, this profile consisted uh, of these characteristics. People who are quote Bible believing fundamentalist Christians who have a strong belief in the advent, second advent of Christ, people who um, have strong beliefs in the Constitution of the United States as um, defined and clearly outlined by the Founding Fathers in the Anti and Federalist Papers, uh, people who um, uh, have home school, people who quote unquote hoard food, um, people who um, have um, strong survivalist leanings, uh, that these people are, are um, thought to be unstable and uh, that uh, they need uh, surveillance, that uh, there needs to be some kind of um, effort to, um, um, to monitor these individuals. Uh, and uh, that uh, was quite disturbing to this individual because, um, as a matter of fact, um, you'd find that the great preponderance of people in Utah and throughout the Intermountain West tend to fit that very description. And, and, and that's correct, they do. Um, this is all very disturbing, I, and I have to caution you, ladies and gentlemen, that we know that the activity that he's talking about involving helicopters and troops and things in the valleys in the uh, western uh, central portion of the state of Utah are happening uh, because, as you know, uh, I have a large intelligence network and we've been getting these reports from many people for a long time. The other reports that he's giving us are coming secondhand from other people that he knows. And you should pay attention to this and uh, set it in the back of your mind with a question mark on it as something that's not verified, uh, but something that, if true, could have serious consequences uh, for all of us. So just remember, on this broadcast, we always separate facts from what we cannot prove, and uh, we make sure that you know the difference between the two. Um, this gentleman, uh, Chris, is uh, an, an extremely... Uh, nice, uh, well-dressed uh, gentleman, and by well-dressed I don't mean in a suit and tie, I mean clean and, and uh, normal uh, type of person who, uh, who is really concerned about uh, what he and his friends have experienced, and I have to tell you, if any of that had happened to me, I would tell him. Thank you, Chris, for coming and sharing this uh, experience with us. I think it's important that people know that these things are real and that they are happening, and that similar experiences are happening in the uh, western portion of the state uh, of New Mexico, not too far from where I sit. Uh, the same thing happens. Helicopters and troops come into a certain valley. A train pulls in. Heavy equipment is offloaded and disappears into the hills. Uh, Chris, thank you very much. For everybody else out there listening, don't go away because the second half of this broadcast is going to frost you. You're not going to believe, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to hear. You see, everybody thinks that nothing came out of Waco. The truth is, the Branch Davidians made a videotape. The videotape is two hours long. They made it shortly after the original attack on their church in Waco, Texas, before the power was severed to their buildings. All of the people in this videotape are now dead, including the children. It is their testimony, the testimony that no one has ever heard before. This videotape is two hours in length. You're going to hear approximately 33 minutes of this tape. 
33 minutes. We've got to get this tape out. We have already disseminated 100 copies of this tape to our most trusted agents across the nation. So any attempt upon this building to obtain the masters will be futile in any effort to stop the dissemination of this tape. For those of you who would like to purchase a copy of this videotape in its entirety, send us $25 postpaid. $25 postpaid. When you get the tape, make as many copies as you can. Send them to everybody that you can think of in your whole life. Congressmen, senators, people, important people in the community. You're going to be amazed. These people sit calmly and tell about the attack. They talk about their children and their life with the Branch Davidians. Some of them are wounded, some of them seriously wounded, but you'd never know it by their voices. This videotape is probably one of the most important pieces of material that has surfaced in this country in many, many years. It is important in its own way if it were broadcast on CBS News tonight in its entirety, it could bring down the entire government of the United States of America. Don't go away. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, there's a loud knock on your door. Hey, honey. Something's not right. And I'm from the IRS with a pride of tax. If you've got a complaint, stay up the back. Get out of this house. Surrender your taxes. This is your goal. You better obey it before it's a hole. That's the best I can do for your goal. Hillary Shalala, Reno Janet Dyke, reading the words of General Albert Pike, the money founder of the Ku Klux Klan, engineer of the Masonic Master Plan. Pike said, Lucifer is God across this land, and put the same hit the mark in your right hand. It is. Okay, what brought you over here? Okay, is there anything else you'd like to share? Or? Well, yes. Um, you know, I said I'm, I'm from London, England, and what happened last Sunday really um, surprised me. Um, I'm shocked, I'm disgusted, I'm upset about the whole thing because this is supposed to be uh, the land of the you know, freedom and free, free and religious cities. And, you know, one minute everything's calm, and the next thing there's women and children where I'm staying. And there's like gunshot, and we're hitting the floor like out of movies, you know. Didn't hear anybody give us any warning or anything. And I thought, this was the first thing, I thought, well, this would never happen in England. And that's uh, just disgusting. And apart from that, we haven't had any freedom to the press, which is disgusting also. Um, my rights as a British citizen, and as, as well as being in this country, we should have. Um, some sort of outlet to the media so they know what is going on here. Okay. Anything you wanted to add about any other thing um, that you'd like to say to the people that this will go to? Uh, uh, by the way, I'm not sure where the tape is going. Basically, that I'm here on my own free will. I'm not being held hostage, and we are a big family here. We're very happy. This is my family. Those who do the will of God, my father, are, the, are my family. Um, I love those who are my family of the flesh, but until they know the truth about this message, then, you know, I have to put this family 
first. So you don't choose to leave the, the place right now? No, no way. This is where I am. This is where my beliefs are. This is where the truth is being let out this time. And, um, well, we should wait and see what God has in store for the world. So is that what you're doing? Is you're waiting right now? Yes, I'm waiting on God. I mean, this is where the truth is. Where else is it? This is where existence is forming in the world. I mean, there is no existence outside this vicinity. This is where David is. He is revealing the field, and this is what the world should have been waiting for. And I'm very fortunate to be in this place at this time. Is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, I, I would like to say that I think the American government are very foolish not to listen first to what they have to say and to come up with something like a big tank of toy as they have with that big tank which is outside. It, to me, it's, it's um, I don't want to insult them, but it's really insulting to see such a big um, armor equipment with people who are inside this place, like women and children. I mean, what, what they're trying to prove. No, and I am here on my own people. I am not being dragged away to think everyone's just too free what they are. And, uh, I'm very happy and um, living a, a normal life. Is that it, Ken? That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank Hi. you. We'll, we'll stop until you have some else here. Okay. What is your name? My name is Marjorie. Marjorie, where are you from? Uh, and what brings you here to Waco, Texas, of all places? And, um, I met someone who had been to America, had met someone who was able to um, reveal revelation and put passages together from different parts of the Bible. Um, I was interested. I was told to come and see, which I did, back in Medicine America. And when I was shown um, passages in, in the Bible, it was my blowing because no one in the churches or um, the church leaders was able to answer my questions on things that I wanted to know. And in coming over here, things were brought to my attention. I could see things more clearly. It was shock at first for someone to show you something which you've been looking for all your life. But then again, it was also nice to know that you found someone who could reveal these things. Okay, it sounds kind of strange, I'm sure, to most people to even hear something like that. Um, so what have you thought of the, the events of just as of recently, some of the things that have been taking place, like a week ago, a Sunday, for instance? Do you have a reaction to that or in response to that also or in relation to that? Do you want to make a statement about leaving or staying? Do you want to leave? No, I'm here with my free will. So are we holding you? Am I or no, David or anybody else holding you? No one's holding me here. It's my choice to be here. I decided to be here. I want to be here. We realize also that man has uh, made boundary lines all over this globe called an earth and uh, has uh, divided it up. But we believe, according to Psalms 50, don't we, that God owns all things? Okay, so again, you want to be here then? You're here on your own free will? Do you want to add anything to that, Marge? Well, the incident which happened last week, Sunday, was a shock. Um, when you see these things on the television, you can walk away from it, but when you actually on the scene when an incident happens, it's frightening. You know, one minute you're looking out of the window seeing three helicopters, and the next minute you hear firing and you're on the floor with um, bullet shells flying all over your head. It, it's frightening. And also having tanks around the building, which I don't think is necessary. Okay. Anything, uh, if this was to go back to Britain, to paper, any parts of it, or to the press, is there anything else you might want to add or to say? It's my family, my friends, and a new friend, a new friend, that I might be making. Um, but I'm fine, as you can see, because of my own free will, I am happy with the people who I am with. Um, but, 
like to say about the stress is some of the things that they are hearing are not the truth. And I hope with this video being made that and things that are about to happen that people will see and know the truth. Okay, did you want to add anything else? Or is that about it? Okay, thank you, Marge. Thank you. It's Renata that wants to share a few things, and we will put her on. And what is your name? My name is um, Judy Schneider Perez. This is my daughter, Mina. And um, as you can see, I was wounded when the ATF came in and assaulted us. I was quite surprised to see our government act the way it did in that David went to the door with his hands up and said, don't shoot, there's women and children in here. And yet they opened fire and fired at everyone here. It was just amazing. I don't really expect anyone to jump on our bandwagon right now and believe what we believe after just hearing little bits and pieces. I've been in the message since 1986 studying with David and just learned so many astounding things. I just think now we need to sit back and see what, what really is going on in our government. That's the whole thing that we're upset with right now, and we're waiting on God for an answer about what we can do. Uh, can I see a, a close-up of your fingers? You'll hold it still. Let me zoom yeah, in we'll on your finger. Okay, don't move it now. Hold it right there. I will uh, try to see if I can focus it in a little better than what I have at this point in time. Okay. Okay. Uh, what happened there with your fingers? You were just sitting there. I was told you were nursing the baby or a, one of the babies or what was it? Yeah, I was just sitting there with my hands sort of like this and bullets were coming in our window. A lot of our clothing was damaged from bullets and I'm glad we weren't more than this. That's some very fast finger you have there. Yeah, it's kind of swollen. I just spoke to Josh on the phone. He said it's, it's quite dangerous. He said I should come out and get treatment, but I asked him why doesn't he come in here and said I don't really trust what they might do out there as far as were you, a person hostage. Were you hurt any other place or did you have any other injuries? Right. This, I was sitting here kind of like, I don't, I'm not exactly sure it happened so fast, but at any rate, it, it went up this finger into my hand and out my shoulder. Okay. Uh, what brought you here in the first place to Waco, Texas? To study David. Okay, and uh, a question that everybody wants to know, do you want to leave? Are you being held here against your will? You, uh, uh, I, I want to leave when God says go, but um, no, I don't want to go out there on my own without David and everyone else, the rest of my family. We're all family. So no one's holding your, you here against your will? No one would be holding anyone here against me. Okay, were you able to see a video that uh, the agency sent to us uh, showing some of the children that were at the at the facility, that wherever they're at? The video we saw today of them running around crazily, eating candy, drinking soda pop, jumping around like well maniacs, um, watching videos. and. Yeah, we were all quite upset to see our children behave like that because they've always been well-mannered and disciplined and they don't eat candy in between meals and only on rare occasions. It's not good for your teeth or health or anything. So you see that as being a, a cause of a hyperactivity in children, something yeah. they already yeah, have? I mean, we love the kids. They can't help the way they're being cared for. And I guess that's the only thing that people out there really know. Is there anything else you might have to say to the American people or to anybody that's on the outside, your your family maybe, your friends? Well, I love you, Mom, of course, you know that. And I love all my family, and I just hope everyone doesn't jump to making decisions with, before they've heard our side. Because right now all you're hearing is the press. You're getting a very perverted press. You're not allowed to um, broadcast live. It has to be taped and it has to be... Um, cut out and pain, stories, all, all kinds of lies. I mean, like the lady holds up a board, this is what the ATF uses, this is what we use. I'm like, wow, I never saw one of those before. <laughs> right. I mean, it's so many lies, so many lies. They change their stories all the time. You just need to trust God. I mean, trust God, read your Bible, know what you're talking about. What are you doing with your life? What do you do every day with your life? Is it something God approves of? I mean, before you judge us, uh, make sure your own life is clean. Would you want your life 
um, broadcast from the day you were in high school, what you did, who you went out with. Um, you know, I mean, we're, we're being strip naked, so let's make sure when that happens to you, you're ready to meet guys. Is there any final comments you'd like to make? Um, I think that was it. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Uh, what about what about my aunt? Did she want to say anything? My name is Hello, your grandma, grandpa, and your aunt too. Stay, stay soon. Stay soon, y'all. Wait. Okay. Thank you. We'll go on to someone else. Ladies with me, and we'll start out by finding out what their names are, and we'll start with uh, the one on the far left. And what is your name? My name is Lisa. And how old are you, Lisa? Thirteen. Thirteen. And who's next to you? Um, Abby. And how old are you, Abby? I'm eleven. You're eleven. And who else do we have here? I'm Rachel, and I'm thirteen. You're thirteen, and? Abby, I'm thirteen. And you're thirteen also. Uh, of course, as everyone else, we've asked, why are you here? And we'll start again with Lisa. What, Lisa, what brings you here to Texas? Well, my dad and mom... My dad and mom brought me here when I was a little. When you were young? Yeah, I was young. So you, you, were, you didn't really come here by choice then, per se, did you? Mm -hmm. But now that you're... How old are you again? 13 years old, do you, would you like to leave? No. You don't want to leave? Uh, even though there are all these events have been taking place with uh, the gunfire and the possibility of uh, more, and not knowing what's going on, you still don't want to leave? Are you being held against your will? No. Are you sure? Okay. What about Abby? Abby, what are you doing here? What brought you here? Well, I came to live with my grandma when I was about five. When you were about five? And have you left since then at all? Have you been, have you gone away to get to visit? Yes, I have. Okay. So, do you want to leave now? If, if you were given the opportunity to leave now, would you like to leave? No. Are you sure? Yes. Is anyone here holding you against your will? No. No one is. Okay, is there anything you would like to say to your grandmother on the outside or anyone else? Mm -hmm. Okay, and next we have Rachel. Rachel, uh, tell us something about your arriving here. Have you been here for a while? Yeah, I've been here so five years old. You're about five? And you've had opportunity to leave, have you? Well, yeah. I mean, I've always been told if I want to leave, I can leave, but, you know, I've never wanted to. Why not? Well, because, you know, I, I like it here, have friends here, and plus there's a truth that, you know, David teaches the seven seals and he can reveal it, and there's no one else so far, you know, that I've heard of that can do that. And so I just decided to stay here and listen. So then what you're saying is it's because of his ability to open up the Bible, of which uh, we all see that there are almost two billion people in the world that claim to be Christians and claim that that's their foundation also. So you see that he has an ability that the fathers haven't shown, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I know I'm asking someone of a leading question because I know that you all are a little bit camera shy. Uh, what about you, Audrey? What brings you here? Um, I came here when I was seven years old and my grandma brought me here and I was too little to understand anything but now since I'm getting older I can understand more and it's, you know, true so far and, you know, I've never heard anybody else tell the truth, you know, like... Okay, like David apparently is what you were thinking of. Okay, let's see. So another few questions we've asked everybody. Uh, is there anything you want to say to friends or family or anywhere else? Or do you want to... Okay, I don't have anything to say. You don't have anything else to say? Uh, really? Okay, what about you, Audrey? Folks, the uh, heavy machinery that you hear in the film from time to time is the tank moving around the building. 
Also, you will hear banging, sound like carpentry going on. That's the Branch Davidians trying to uh, put something more substantial between them and the government agents outside the building. And clear that, you know, they just don't want to listen. I don't understand that. And you're wondering why more people aren't interested in the Bible and it being unlocked? Is that what you're saying? And to see what's for us for the final days? Okay, I understand. Anything else? I guess that'll do. Okay, well, thank you, girls. Well, sir, and we'll ask for you to identify yourself. What is your name, please? My name is Lorraine Sylvia. Lorraine Sylvia, do you also have a family here or a partial family, or what can you tell me about that? Yes, I do. Um, I have a daughter here in Hollywood. Okay. And I have uh, my son I sent out. And what is his name? His name is Joshua. So, Joshua, have you been able to see anything or, or hear anything of Joshua as of recently? Uh, well, when we first sent him out, he was able to call up that night to, to, to come get a ride. And uh, then today I saw a videotape of him. And uh, I've got to tell you, I was not impressed. Why were you not impressed with the videotape? Well, they had all the children in a room, and the kids were all going wild and jumping around. And it was like they had no discipline, no correction. And we just don't do that with our kids here, you know. Okay. Uh, the kids are supervised all the time. And, you know, I think you go into a Bible study, they'll sit for hours quietly and peacefully. And when I saw this video, they, they were acting like wild animals. Okay, so that, that bothered you then. Okay. Uh, why are you here in the first place? Well, uh, eight years ago, David came to my home in Massachusetts and he was presenting Bible studies to my family. And I just saw that he had something. He was able to take uh, all the books of the Bible and harmonize them, uh, line upon line, precepts upon precepts. And it made sense. It was something when you read it yourself, you couldn't see it. But once he showed it to you, it was readily understood. There was just no debating it. Okay. Do you have a desire to leave here? No. I you don't. Have no and nobody is holding a gun at my head to make me say that. No, no, okay, no. so no one's holding you back, keeping here, threatening you, or anything no. else? If God says to wait, then I intend to wait. All right. And what? And a lot of people have said that, but what do you mean if God says to wait? Is God talking to you or something? No, uh, God does not talk to me. But, um, the book of Revelation shows that God has a book in his hand, and he hands that book to someone, he hands it to the Lamb. He's the only one that can reveal the book. God does speak to someone, and David is shown in the field. So, David, God says, wait. I don't trust it in him this long. He's proven himself to me. So I'm going to wait. Okay, I see. Uh, also, uh, would you have anything you wanted to say to family elsewhere or friends? Would you have any statements to make uh, about the incident that happened or maybe 10 days ago, anything you like at all. It doesn't even have to be that. Okay, anyway. first, uh, the incident is just a total outrage. Why is that? I, I don't know how the American people can stand by and watch such a thing take place. We have people out here, we have all these people, women, children, tiny babies. These men came in here and they started firing on us. The boats came through the walls and people were killed, people were injured. And this is America. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say or add? Uh, to my family, I love them. Please take Joshua. Okay. Thank you. We're going to go over here now, and we're going to ask to someone else sitting close by here her name and where she's from. My name is Kathy Schroeder. I'm originally from Florida. Okay, you're from Florida. Kathy, what brings you here in the first place? A few years ago, I met yourself, Steve Schneider, and my husband and I, we were in Miami, Florida, and we found revealing truth in the Bible that we just could not just repute at all. There was no way. We eventually came and met David Koresh and found that he was doing the opening up of these truths and have stayed to listen to everything we could. And everything, like Larry said, precept upon precept, line upon line, her little, bear little. The whole 
Bible. Every book of the Bible tells the same prophecy, tells the same thing. And I wouldn't know that, what not to do to Okay. So, do you have a, also any children, or where's your family? I have four children, three by an ex, and one from my late husband, my children. They are not here with me right now. Um, the incident that happened Sunday that nerve-wracked everybody, I mean, women and children were in our homes, just totally shocked with barrage of weaponry fired upon our homes. Of course, me and the children all got down, and we were all safely made it through that original gunfire, but it scared me too much to allow them to stay here. So my children have been released. They are out. And I found out today that the three that do belong to my are psycho physiologically my ex's children. He has custody of them now. I found that out today. Oh, my young. fourth, he turned three Sunday. You see, youngest is still in state custody as far as I know. Why did you send you, you said you sent your children up so that you thought they might have a better chance of survival? Is that the idea? Physical survival, yes. They have tank things in our faces. Every day we are worried. There's no telling what the federal agents out there will do based on what they've already done. So for their physical lives and, and their well-being, I sent them out there. Well, what about your own life and your own physical well-being? Don't you want to be with your children? Yes, I would much rather my children be here with me. But I would not like to be out there because I know that what I'm doing here is for a reason. God said to wait. The God that I believe in, the God that David Christ has shown me that sits on a throne that has a book in his hand, free revelation is all right there. It's so plain and simple. But if you've got somebody to sell it to you, which took me a lot of years to finally find, and once I did, there's no, there's no disagreement at all to say that that's not what's in the book. So you don't, you don't want, is anyone holding you here against your will, Kathy? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's his will and his will be done. Okay. Uh, what, did you see that videotape of your children today? Yes, I viewed that videotape. I was a little disappointed in a couple of my children jumping on couches and making silly faces and just really going crazy. Had they been in my possession, had I been with them at the time, they would not have acted so radically. Is that to say they're not allowed to have fun? Or? I, no, no. My children have fun, but they were, they were quite un- Discipline, un, unsupervised at that time, at the time the video was taken. And that's not, not something that you would like to see that? No, my okay. children are constantly um, doing schoolwork when they're with me. They're constantly working and praying. Well, when it's supervised, when it's well supervised, they do a lot of playing. They do a lot of exercise, but not jumping on couches and tables like I saw my young daughter doing today. Would you like to see this all resolved, the situation, or maybe back as it was? What are your thoughts about that? What do you mean as it was? Well, about 10 days ago, you, we were all coming together studying the Bible. It was uh, things as usual. Before the, before the ATF got involved. Right. Okay, yes, I would love to see the situation resolved. I would love to have my children back, and I would love to have my ability to worship God in the way that I feel I want to worship God, which is our American right. I would love to have that back. But as it stands right now, I can't worship God the way I want to. They're taking that from me. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, one more thing I would like to tell the public, if they can and find this out, that I am really tired of the lies. I'm really tired of hearing the stories that the relations have told the public, seeing as how we have no press coverage directly from this facility, from our church. We have no one telling the world our side, and I am watching on and listening on the radio, watching on the news reports, the press conferences, watching the lies that the federal agents have told. It's astounding day after day how far they go, and that's just one agency. All the other agencies back there are going to back them up. That's including our federal government. We, the people, don't run this government anymore. We, the people, don't run this country. 
they do, and they tell all the lies they want, and I'm just... But do you think all of these men are like that, don't you? Do you not see that there might be some sincere that are trying to do their best from their vantage point? Those that are trying to do their best are trying to do their job. They have a family back home, too, but they don't understand what the system is doing. If they did, they would be out in the system. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Just that I love my family, and I hope that my ex does try to get custody of my youngest child, Brian. That's very important to me. And that the children know that God does control the situation. No matter what happens, God is in control, and I believe that. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Have someone else here now. May I ask you your name? My name is Teresa. And where are you from, Teresa? I'm from England. You are. What brings you over to America, of all places, here in oh. Texas? Well, about four years ago, um, I was thinking the truth about the Bible. I was wondering why we have a Bible that we don't understand, you know. So I started inquiring, and one day found someone up to talk about this, and they told me someone was coming over from America, and we arranged to meet. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's about all the time that we have. Now, uh, I want you to uh, understand that you can purchase this tape. It's a videotape. It is two hours in length. If you'd like to have a copy, send us $25 plus $5 postage and handling. That's a total of $30. That's $25 plus $5 postage and handling for a total of $30 to the Intelligence Service, Post Office Box 1420, Sholo, Arizona, 85901. That's the Intelligence Service, Post Office Box 1420, Sholo, Arizona, 85901. We have gone to a lot of expense to safeguard this tape. We have distributed 100 copies into the hands of our most trusted agents across the country. Any attempt to destroy this tape or stop us from distributing this tape will be futile. So, for those of you who are committing treason against the people of the United States of America and indeed the liberties of the world, you'd better think twice. The militia of the state of Arizona is guarding this facility from this time forward around the clock. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and God bless each and every single one of you. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, there's a loud knock on your door. Hey, hey. something's not right. Your arms. Get them all fast. We're here for the devil. We're here to help you. And I'm from the IRS with a power to attack. If you've got a complaint, we're going to attack. Get out of this house. Turn your charges. Give me your gold. You better obey if you want to go. Hillary Shalala, Reno Janet Dyke, reading the words of General Albert Pike, the money founder of the Ku Klux Klan, engineer of the Masonic Master Plan. Pike sends Lucifer is God now across this land. And Clinton's saying, take the mark in your right hand. While we're all dancing to the drums of Up World Right, Clinton's preparing it for another huge act. Pike. Order. Order out of chaos, aggression, inflation, and creates a panic and rape the nation. Order. Crisis creation. In sight, black and white, program agitation. Things hit the mark in your right hand. While well, we're all dancing to the drums of up world right, Clinton's preparing it for another huge act. Order. Order.
Network creates in white, black, and white program education. Mark, it's your right hand. So we're all dancing to the drums of Buffalo's right. Thanks for preparing it for another.